ready for race two of the weekend for the Cooper S's, the Coopers and the open class cars. So these are all non-current spec minis. But Rob Austin, the man who won the first encounter of the weekend, will start on pole position ahead of Tim Porter, starting race two as they finish race one. Scott Adam, Carlito Morocco on row two of the grid. Adam, one of the front runners this season, Carlito, only started a little later in the championship. Further back, Max Bladen is on pole position in the Cooper class. He is undefeated so far this season. Away they go. Good start from the front row men. Matt Gray car of Rob Austin, Tim Porter alongside him. And the second grid, all the Coopers heading down towards Paddock Hill Bend as well. Scott Adam into second place from the start. Up the inside, the pale blue and orange car takes the lead. Great start from Scott Adam to get ahead of Rob Austin. Further back, the open class cars and the Coopers now all mixed together in one enormous field of mini racing. It's exactly what minis are all about. As many cars as you can humanly find, door handle to door handle all the way through. Leader of our open class, the yellow car, Keith Isaac, Richard Mills behind him, number 34, the white and black car. Close battle in the middle of the field there. Oh, and trouble in the barriers hard. Number 21, Adam Davey. Looks like 93, Ollie Walker driving off as well. Big shot for Davey. Scott Adam leads from Rob Austin, Tim Porter. There's Carlito Morocco in fourth place up to Drews. Oh, and trouble behind in the gravel trap. Car rolling, two cars there. And those are open class number 33, Stuart Lane. And the other car, 34, Richard Mills, another open car. I think Richard was in second in the open class, wasn't he? 11, Max Bladen just goes down the bottom of the hill with Richard Mills. Very disorientating, trying to get yourself out of an inverted car. And he's being helped out by the marshals. Well, good to see that he's OK. Car looking very second-hand. Red flag, no surprise. Race stopped. Bit of barrier repair work going on the exit of clearways as well. On board them with Adam Davy into Surtees. Oh, contact from behind very early on. That was never coming back. Oh, that's quite a big impact with the tyres there. Broke the window, look. Like first gear, off he goes. And then into Paddock Hill Bend. It's the battle for second behind the yellow car, Keith Isaac, in the open class. And it all gets very tangled up sideways. Actually, relatively gentle roll. Watching with Richard Mills, listen. Oh, so slow motion. And into the gravel, and it just falls over right at the end of it. Well, could have been an awful lot worse. He's got the presence of mind to switch everything off quickly work because that's not the sort of thing you get to rehearse restarting our race then Rob Austin and Tim Porter on the front row of the grid again from Scott Adam and Carlito Morocco who barely moves Adam made a great start in the first effort of getting away through into the lead at Druids now he tucks into third place behind Tim Porter Rob Austin leaves them down the hill Carlito Morocco drifts out wide Steve Cocker up the inside of him and a change in the lead in the uh, Cooper class Josh Golin has taken the lead away from Max Bladen, on board with Adam Davey. Don't forget he had that uh, shunt into the tyres in the first start. There he is, he's third in the Cooper class, fourth in the Cooper class, in fact, as they drop down the bottom of the hill. And Ollie Walker, the 93 car, seems to have got away from that incident in the first start. Much lighter damage than Adam Davey, on board with Adam. Leaders already sweeping through clearways and onto the Clark curve. A couple of damaged cars in the field, quite a lot of tank tape being used to hold bits and pieces on. Plenty of action through the field. Keith Isaac leading in the open class. Battle further back in that class here. Triple five, Andrew Bailey and Martin Hathaway squabbling ahead of Chloe Hewitt. Alito Morocco there in fifth position in the Cooper S class. Rob Austin still leads from Tim Porter and Scott Adam, who must rue the red flag in the first race. He got the lead at the start. Here is Max Bladen, 
who is undefeated so far in the Cooper class this season. A truly remarkable year he is having. Must make everybody else in that category despair or pray that he promotes himself up to another category. Scott Adam all over the back of Tim Porter, second. And this is now Simon Clark and Adam Hathaway, second in the open class. Simon Clark with a very unmini like looking mini. In the middle of our Cooper battle, there is 21 Adam Davy in fifth place on board with him. Right in front, Michael Bamber. That yellow square with the black cross means he's still a novice driver. This is his first season of racing. In front of him, Simon Walton, third. Josh Golin, second. Max Blade and the pole man. And the race one winner still in the lead. And Sam Weller squeezes in front of Adam Davy into Paddock Hill Bend. Climbing the hill up to Druids. Davy looking up the inside, no way through there. The damaged cars behind in the Cooper class as well. Battle for 11th. Martin Poole on the inside, the damaged car of Macaulay Austin. Look at the front of that blue car. Looks more like a BMW than it does look like a Mini. Ironically, given the parent company, of course. And going around him was the yellow car number 22 of Will Neal. Now, he's Henry Neal's twin brother. Started racing a year behind, but a very 1960s livery on the side of that car as he attacks the number 91, and that is Owen Walton with the gold and black. Battle the second in the open class. Stuart Clark with a damaged car ahead of Jonathan Davis. Davis looking up the inside at Druids. Stuart Clark more tank tape at the front of that car than actual BMW parts and trouble behind. And again in the Cooper class, and again heavily into the barriers, Adam Davy much more heavily. This time, car stranded in the gravel trap is Simon Walton. Adam Davy abandoned in the road. That's not going very far. I think he's going to have to park in and bail out. And that might be the end of this race. If they don't bring out the red flags, they have brought out the red flags. Would have been very, very surprised indeed. So red flags out again, another big pile-up. Adam Davy, his car is going to need a lot of work before the next race weekend. He is out of the car, fortunately. It's a big old impact. Chloe Hewitt was the car he was trying to avoid. Sam Weller down there in the gravel trap as well at Paddock Hill Bend. And Simon Walton's car is down there also. There is Simon Walton. He's out, so they're all out of the cars. That's one of the great things about racing modern cars and Walton oh blimey that was close at the top of it the man who was not really involved takes the biggest hit and that's Adam Davy. Well, Adam Davy with the onboard camera look into Paddock Hill Bend and what happens here is Josh Golin the red car on the curbs on the inside trying to get by Chloe Hewitt drags her into a spin now her car immediately gets hit by Simon Walton and unfortunately, Adam Davy should have aimed for the spinning cars, tries to take avoiding action, and that barrier is waiting for that big impact. Victory in the Coupe class went to Max Bladen in the open class to Keith Isaac, and our overall race winner in the Cooper S is Rob Austin. Final race of the weekend for the Coopers, the Cooper S's and the open class. Rob Austin starting on pole position, Tim Porter alongside him. This is how they finished race two. Scott Adam in third place, Carlito Morocco also on the second row of the grid. And after the incident that brought out the red flags, Josh Golin given a four place grid penalty for causing that incident. Loads and loads of minis on track, loads and loads more in the car park here at this mini festival. Ready to go, great start from Bob Austin, really good getaway. Scott Adam also underneath Tim Porter into Paddock Hill Bend. It's the danger of being on the uphill side of the track, it is so easy to get beaten at the start. Carlito Morocco on our left around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend, and that means that Tim Porter is going to have to attack under braking up towards Druids. Dust is down there, Morocco sweeps around the outside looking for second. That's a really ballsy move. And behind, a big, big moment for Michael Bamba, turning into Paddock Hill Bend on some of that oil dry, perhaps, or just colder tyres than he was expecting. Max Bladen leads the Cooper class. The 
Open Class and the Cooper Class, both with a few casualties after the race two stoppage. Molly Walker in the 93 car. Started in the middle of the field, being chased down by Will Neal. And there is the lead group, Sam Weller, ahead of Michael Bamba. Max Bladen with the race lead, the blue flash going through, one turn sideways, Adrian Norman, oh, and the grey car, and that was Darren Chat, Will Neal and James Goodall going through the gravel. And there's another car there as well, Martin Poole, number 49, the red and white car. I'm not sure that Adrian Norman's going to go much further. So the leaders then, Rob Austin ahead of Scott Adam. Scott Adam all over the back of Rob Austin, but they are going to get two either yellow flags or red flags, possibly with cars in the gravel there. Martin Poole's car is going to need a drag. Leaders are on the scene, and surely, yes, vigorously waved yellow flags, so they will slow down and be prepared to stop if required. I said slow down and straight through goes Scott Adam. Well, Rob Austin did slow dramatically, Scott Adam, Possibly a little caught by surprise, but he shouldn't have been because if he didn't see the yellow flags, uh, be surprised. Safety car will now pick up the field. So, Robin Austin needs to try and get himself back in front. This cleanup operation will take a little while. Only Martin Poole's car is still there. So, we lost Adrian Norman, Nathaniel Golin who started the incident, I think, still going there. Number 25 with the red car with the black roof. There's Michael Bamber. Bamba in third place. Darren Chat, I don't think we've got any more. And Martin Poole definitely out. Let's take a look at the replay. Nathaniel Golin's red car, I think, inside Adrian Norman. Yes, it is. Norman spins. And Will Neal runs into the back of 98. Darren Chat as he is trying to slow down. Neal takes the gravel. James Goodall gets through as well. Darren Chat's rear wheel ripped off. And there's another car on the dirt. And that is Ollie Walker on the inside. On board with Ollie Walker. And it's all going to kick off right in front of him. Right in front, 49 Martin Poole. And he avoids it all. Oh, and then gets hit from behind. And again. And again, goodness me! Hit three times after avoiding the accident. Safety car ready to pull in. Scott Adam with the lead. Now, is he going to slow down and give it back to Rob Austin? He really needs to, or he'll be explaining himself to the stewards. On board with Tim Porter, fourth place behind Carlito Morocco. This race scheduled for a 15-minute duration, so that safety car period has certainly taken away a lot of racing laps. And Rob Austin still in second in the black car, so Scott Adam has held on to the lead. Yes, he has. Well, he's got two choices now, either to give it back immediately or try and run away and hide in the hope that the stewards don't give him a big enough penalty, but I'm sure they'll see that one. Keith Isaac leading the 180s. And in the Coopers, it is the white car of Sam Weller giving chase to Max Bladen. Michael Bamber in the black car. And behind them, number 17 with the blue roof, Josh Golin. So Max Bladen again living a charmed life, avoided the incidents and manages to jump away at the restart in the blue car with the union flag on the roof, leaving his rivals, Sam Weller. And number four, Michael Bamber to battle with Josh Golin. Ollie Walker should have been there. He started fourth place on the grid, but of course his car was taken out in that multi-car pileup. Scott Adams still leads the race. Not much time left for him to give a position back to Rob Austin. I think perhaps he's just going to carry on racing, and if Austin comes calling, let him through easily. I rather feel that he might be heading towards the stewards' room no matter what he does now. On board with Tim Porter. Normal standard H pattern gearbox in these cars. The John Cooper Works cars, of course, with their sequential gear shifters, very much like a touring car style gearbox. And these Cooper S's 1.6 turbos, so are the open class cars. Of all with Scott Adam. And again, at the incident, yellow flags are out. Cars all over the place. How could he have not known it was yellow? Goes by, 
and then decides not to give the lead back. Well, I'm afraid that is definitely an error of judgment. Battle for fifth position. Everybody in it. At the back is Will Neal. And Max Bladen still leading in the Cooper class. Samuela easing away from Michael Bamba and Josh Golin. And then in fifth position, 107, that is Macaulay Austin. Door handle to door handle, further back, 87, Max Lever on the outside, losing out a little bit to Nathaniel Golin. And Golin with a novice's cross. I'm sure the stewards will look at the video of what happened. He may get, uh, ooh, and he ought to get certainly a visit to the stewards just for that manoeuvre alone, forcing a driver onto the grass on the inside, up against the pit wall. Nathaniel Golden may well get a couple of black marks on his license and he still has his novice cross. He's not endearing himself to a lot of people at the moment, is he? Dropping the wheel off on the outside. No dramas there in the dry for Michael Bamber. Loses him a little bit of ground perhaps to Josh Golin. Take a look again as James Goodall squeezes on the inside. Nathaniel Golden didn't really close the door on him there. He actually got pushed sideways by Goodall, but spatial awareness isn't all it could be. Max Bladen still with the lead of the Cooper class and still in fifth position, 107 Macaulay Austin. Right behind him, 91 Owen Walton. And there is Will Neal's car looking a little bit second-hand at the front. That's where he got caught up in that multi-car pileup through the gravel, but too much damage done. And behind them come the leaders. They are closing in fast. Such a short lap here. Scott Adam leading Rob Austin. Alito Morocco in third place, then the teammates. 94, Tim Porter. And behind him, Steve Cocker. And again, identical colour scheme on their cars. Different uh, highlight colour, red as opposed to green. Turning into Paddock Hill Bend, and the battle is on for second place. Carlito Morocco looking inside and outside. Makes Rob Austin defend tight at Druids. See if he can get a shoot alongside him down the hill. He can't, didn't really make the most of that, Carlito. Scott Adam stays in front. Good race weekend last time out at Rockingham for Scott Adam. And trying to capitalise on that here as well. Carlito Morocco following in the wheel tracks at the moment of Rob Austin. Running out of time fairly quickly. Battle on for fourth place though. Steve Cocker and Tim Porter as they come across the line. Steve Cocker very close indeed out of clearways. And he's piling on the pressure into Paddock Hillbend just at the background of the shot. Scott Adam. Leads up to Druids, breaking hard before the crest turns in over the rise. And still, Tim Porter holds on in fourth place. There's our open class leader. So, Keith Isaac ahead of Jonathan Davis. Battle for fourth place, number 34 at the moment, Richard Mills just in front. And Aaron Reeve going around the outside of 33, Stuart Lane. Leading out in backmarker traffic. And this might open up an opportunity or two, but at the moment it certainly looks as though Scott Adam is threading his way through safely. Battle for fourth will catch the slower cars as well. Into Patrick Hilbert, Owen Walton around the outside in the gravel, carrying in too much pace. Oh, that would have terrified him, I'm sure and he loses more places to his class rivals as he pulls off to let the leaders through. There goes Scott Adam, and right behind him is Will Neal. Will Neal in the Cooper class. Well, here again, Walton on the outside, just ran out of road, turned in too late and too high up there. That was never going to go well, I'm afraid. Scott Adam, the Blue car with the orange stripes, number 38, carving his way through traffic. In the middle now of the Cooper field. And still behind him, Rob Austin in the matte black car. And there is number 91, who just went off. James Goodall on the outside, on the inside, Owen Walton. Squeezing through past them is Tim Porter. Steve 
Cocker has got by him for fourth place in the traffic. Ooh, hopping on the inside. Corley Austin just keeps it under control inside Max Lever. Ooh. He's got Rob Austin behind him in the faster Cooper S cars. Ooh, Lever leaning on the inside, going to go three wide. No, Rob Austin goes through quickly in the turbocharged car. Makes his way through, so does Carlito Morocco, all chasing the Cooper S leader, Scott Adam. Cooper S is 1.6 litre turbocharged. So are the open class cars, the Coopers, 1.6 litre normally aspirated. And a big lead now for Scott Adam. Rob Austin with Carlito Morocco. And this might end up being for race victory. Last time into Paddock Hill Bend, Carlito Morocco showing his nose around the outside. Max Bladen leads in the Cooper class, but not by much from the white car that was right with him of Sam Weller. And Scott Adam squeezes inside Josh Golin's Cooper car. Battle for second place coming down to Graham Hill Bend. Scott Adam assured out front of being first to the chequered flag and then first to the stewards room. Surely that pass under yellow flags for the lead cannot go unnoticed and or unpunished. Chequered flag awaits though. Scott Adam will head to victory on the road. Rob Austin holding on from Carlito Morocco in the battle for second. And Max Bladen just in front of Sam Weller. Maybe one of the closest finishes in Coopers. Now, don't forget, they were just in front of the Cooper S class, our race winner. So they have this last lap to go as well. Can Sam Weller break the domination of Max Bladen? Bladen definitely isn't playing with him. Weller is close enough to have a last lap lunge. If he does, where will that be? Sweeping left into Surtees, then right into the McLaren corner, braking hard, down a gear. Through clearways, and it might be all over. Max Bladen has enough heading into the Clark curve, I think. Sam Weller is not going to catch him. It will be second for Sam Weller in the Coopers, but yet another win for Max Bladen, who remains undefeated this season. Sounds happy with that, doesn't he? Max Bladen, three wins in the Cooper class. Three wins, two for Keith Isaac in the Open class. And in the end, Scott Adams' win was taken away. Rob Austin victorious after Adam passed on the yellows. There was a bit of a, a bit of confusion with the safety car. Um, I hadn't seen it. Obviously, Rob had. So I sat there and waved him through for five laps, and he just sat behind me. So when the safety car came in, I don't know what else I was supposed to do. Sam uh, definitely kept me honest in that last one. So, uh, but no, it's we've had pace in the car all year, and it's been really good, and I feel confident with it. And, uh... Max Bladen making a bid for freedom at the top of the Cooper class. Keith Isaac stretching away in the open class, but former leader Scott Jeffs drops to third, just eight points covering the top three in the Cooper S's.